Hello, my beautiful people. My name is Osokato. Welcome to another episode of Basic Nigerian History. In our last episode, we discussed the third military coup that took place in Nigeria and how that coup itself was almost destroyed by another coup. This episode, we're going to talk about how Obasanjo's military government attempts to transition back to civilian rule and his battles with a brave and courageous musician known as Mr. Fela Anikulapo Kuti. Let's begin. Obasanjo's government was accused of covertly pushing a northern agenda. See, there was this conspiracy of the Kaduna Mafia. But don't worry, they weren't really a mafia. It was just a loose term for a group of rich and powerful northerners with a common agenda that can influence governments, basically a lobbying organization. And it was widely believed that Musa Yadua, his second in command, was a part of it. As we know, corruption didn't end during this period, despite all the staff replacements and like a native chronic disease, it got even more entrenched. By entrenched, I mean it soaked into the society, soaked into the core of Nigeria. It became like one with Nigeria, you know? By 1977, Obasanjo's government had bought 60% of two of Nigeria's largest newspapers, Daily Times and New Nigerian. TV and radio were already mostly state-owned, so not only did they control most of the media, but Obasanjo was also more than willing to use the 1976 decree announced by Mohammed before he died to silence or shut down any critics of his government. Just a recap, this decree made it illegal for anyone to bring false accusations of corruption or mismanagement against government officials. Now this is where he and Fela bumped heads. Fela Anikulakpo Kuti, son of the amazing political activist Olufumilayo Ransom Kuti, was a famous eccentric musician who had 27 wives and was politically influenced by black power movements in the States. He went to study music instead of the intended medicine in London and founded Kalakuta Republic, a commune that he declared independent from the government of Nigeria. And from there, he wrote songs that constantly criticized the corruption and violence of military governments. He became Obasanjo's enemy. Also in 1977, an assembly was selected to draft a new constitution. And in 1978, oil prices fell, which means Nigerian revenues took a dip. To accommodate for it, Obasanjo introduced measures and policies that made life difficult for the poor masses of Nigeria, like new taxes, import restrictions, and cuts to social services. An example of the effect was an increase in university tuition fees. This further alienated average Nigerians from the elite Nigerians. That same year, students rioted in protests and some were killed. This was also when Obasanjo decided he had had enough of Fela. Obasanjo's government raided Fela's commune, Kalakuta, with 1,000 soldiers in 1978. They burnt the entire thing to the ground and threw his mother out from a window. Honestly, it's a shame that they would treat such a legendary hero like Mrs. Kuti like that. It's very disappointing. She received major injuries from her fall that she later died from. In retaliation, Fela presented his mother's coffin at the military barracks before having her buried and wrote a song called Coffin for Head of State directed at Obasanjo's government. He also ran for president twice, in 1979 and 1983, but was prevented from registering and campaigning both times. Fela unfortunately died in 1997 of heart failure, which was later found to have been caused by AIDS. On the 21st of September 1978, the Constitution Drafting Committee CDC produced a constitution that was voted on and published. The ban on political activity was lifted. The new constitution was different from that used for the First Republic in that it was designed to stop regional polarization. Instead of being based on the British Westminster model, this one was based on the model of the USA, which had a three-tiered federal structure like Nigeria. President and vice president's roles were created with well-defined and wide-ranging powers. No ceremonial head of state anymore. The federal legislature or national assembly was made up of the House of Representatives and Senates and its role was to check the power of the executive. And of course, the judiciary branch 
was the third axis of the government. Power was also shared in a similar way at state level, with the governor, the deputy governor as the executive leaders. There were new rules created for political parties. Parties had to demonstrate national character by allowing all Nigerians to be members regardless of your ethnicity. They had to locate their HQ in the federal capital territory, and they were allowed to only feature national symbols in their party emblem and mottos, so there was no religious or ethnic symbols allowed. They also had to have branches in at least two-thirds of the states, students, academics, civil servants, and members of the labor unions weren't allowed to take part in parties unless they first resigned their position. In 1979, Obasanjo nationalized all of BP's holding in retaliation for BP's continued commercial relationship with white minority rule in Rhodesia. However, this was more symbolic than substantive, as it didn't really hurt the UK in any way. They had already moved on to producing crude oil from the North Sea. Nigeria's power seemed to be growing smaller and smaller. It was estimated that around this time, Nigeria was donating $5 million annually to aid various liberation movements in Southern Africa, helping countries that today became Namibia, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Angola. Nigeria was estimated to have given $20 million in cash to socialists MPLA, Popular Movement for Liberation of Angola, who fought against the US-backed FNLA, the National Front of the Liberation of Angola, and provided them with over $18 million in military supplies, economic aid, as well as training to their soldiers and students in Nigerian universities. This angered the US greatly, who didn't want a socialist government in Angola. In 1979, over 50 parties rushed to register, but only five were cleared. The parties they rejected obviously included Fela's party. The five that were chosen were the Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, which was led by Obafemi Awolowo, Nigerian People's Party, which was led by Nandi Azikwe, and the Great Nigerian People's Party, the GMPP, which was led by Waziri Ibrahim from Bono. There was also the People's Redemption Party, PRP, led by Aminu Keno, and finally, the National Party of Nigeria, MPN, which was led by Shehu Shagri. This party won allegiance of the old school politicians from First Republic and Gowon years. The five political parties competed in an election between July 7th and August 11th in 1979, and Shehu Shagri, leader of the National Party of Nigeria, won. They seemed to be the most national of all the parties. The presidential candidate was from North. The vice president's candidate was Igbo, Alex Ekweme, and the party secretary was Akin Lawyer, a Yoruba man from the West. Obasanjo's government had at least achieved one thing that Gowon's governments didn't, the transition of power over to civilian rule. In the same year, there was another sudden rise in the price of oil to $19 per barrel. It occurred as a result of the lead up to the Iran-Iraq war. This, along with the previous factors in 1973, meant that by 1979, Nigeria was the sixth largest producer of oil in the world, with revenues from oil being around $24 billion per year. The ban on students, academics, and civil servants joining these parties meant that the old people were in charge again. Nothing had changed, no new blood was allowed to join, and the new oil yields meant more than ever that the governments didn't have to listen or care about the public at all. Things were going from bad to worse for Nigeria. I think we're going to leave it there for today. Now, let's do a recap of what we discussed. We discussed Obasanjo's military government and how he was attempting to transition from military government to civilian rule. We also discussed the enmity between himself and the famous and great musician Mr. Fela and Nikolakpo Kuti and how Mr. Kuti was using his music to fight back against the oppression that he felt from the military government. We also discussed the fact that there was a ban on academics and students joining the parties, which meant that the same group of people were the ones creating new parties. The same corrupt individuals that had been affecting Nigeria in a bad way just rejigged the bound, created a new party, and this led to Sheo Shagari winning the presidency. Next episode, we're going to talk about Sheo Shagari's presidency. Stay tuned. Please guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, click the subscribe button, you know, click the notification button. Just make sure that you are kept up to date with our episodes because this helps us, helps us beat the algorithm of YouTube and keeps us going. So like, subscribe, share with your friends. Dr. Katawa out. I love you.